Hello and welcome again to our YouTube channel. In today's video from the Photoshop tips and tricks, we are going to continue and or build on a previous video on how to make a puzzle out of our uh, images. We are going to see now how to make GIFs out of these puzzles and give them a professional effect. We will see how to let the puzzle pieces appear and we will see how to let the puzzle pieces move and how to record GIF directly from Photoshop. Okay, without further waiting. Let's we go directly to our Photoshop. We'll start with our cover uh, image for today uh, video. And uh, if you remember from the previous video, I'll leave you the link in the description below. Uh, we'll go uh, to our actions. Here I will divide it into smaller four pieces so it can be easier uh, for us to understand the, the concept. And then you can divide it to whatever pieces. It will take you some actions or you can uh, automate these actions after that. Uh, so I will make it to four pieces. Okay. As we said before, it comes that your previous uh, uh, image is uh, untacked, and this is new one. Which he called it copy, or the uh, actions call it copy, and uh, it's divided into four pieces. And our first step is to uh, adjust the bevel and drop shadow, uh, so it uh, gives the, the effect of the puzzle as we like. Uh, of course, uh, the action. This is part of the action. The action is still playing, till because it will apply the settings to all the pieces of the puzzle. So uh, that's the default settings. Uh, okay, I like to increase the the distance uh, a little bit. Okay, and the the, the opacity to make it uh, clear. Okay, and uh, from the pavement impose, I like to uh, increase uh, the depth a little bit and increase the size also a little bit. This uh, gives. Uh, higher effect or deeper effect of my puzzle pieces okay you can see now uh, these are the four puzzle uh, pieces okay now we can hide uh, these actions uh, menu after that to make the uh, the effect of appearing uh, puzzle pieces uh, we'll go to window timeline and we will create a video timeline you will find your four pieces of puzzles are here uh, we will start for example uh, with anyone, we can stand, uh, start in reverse order. For, we can start with P2, okay, and uh, we will make uh, this P2 uh, smart object first, the first thing, and then uh, we will go to. I can extend this a little bit up, okay, and then we go to P2, okay. And then uh, at this first point in P2, I will change the opacity to zero. Okay, and I will record this uh, first point. Okay, and after that, uh, I will go extend further to uh, maybe let's say to two seconds. Okay, that's the two complete images. And then I will increase the opacity to 100 again. Okay, if you play right now, you will see that the, uh, this piece of the puzzle is fading while appearing. But if you like it to pop up uh, directly, so it will be better uh, to come here at this point 15 and to add an opacity of 0 again. Okay, uh, when you make any action while you are in the opacity, it, it directly records here as it records a point with the value you are making. Okay, so now if you like to play this. Uh, This video line, this video timeline, you can see it's moving the other five seconds. We will add the changing of the other pieces of puzzle, but just I like to test uh, the effect. Okay, now it's not starting again because I'm uh, here. You can make it loop playback, but it's I prefer not to make it loop playback in these types of uh, videos. Uh, so you can see the effect. So we start again. It will start from the start point. It's not appearing. Okay, and when it's time, it comes uh, to appear. Okay, now we stop again. Okay, and uh, we rewind our video. We return back uh, to the initial starting point. Okay, and uh, we go to the. Uh, we need at, at the initial point we make all the puzzle pieces not uh, uh, hide, and then uh, one by one after that we will uh, start to uh, to let them appear. Okay, so we go to P1 now, and we convert it to uh, smart object. And after that, we go to uh, P1 opacity, and I record the opacity here as uh, zero. Okay, 
because it was recorded before, so I remove it and I record it again. So now it's recorded as uh, zero. Maybe I need uh, this piece of puzzle, the first one, to appear. So it is zero and it will appear here, for example. And here I'll make it to uh, opacity to 100. And you can see that it recorded already an event uh, directly here. So And I will go to the next piece. Okay, now we can uh, play our video. That's the first piece of puzzle appearing. Second one. Third one. Fourth one, of course, you, you can adjust based on the number of puzzles you like. Okay, now, okay, now l uh, let me uh, make uh, another trick, which is the motion to record the video with motion in the puzzle. So we, uh, I will make a new file. I will select 1000 by 1000, create. Okay. Now I like to uh, to embed one image inside this, and uh, I'll tell you why I put uh, I make this uh, file size as 1000 by 1000. So it's I limit my image to this size because some images are bigger one. It depends on uh, uh, on uh, the size of the file you like to work with. If you like to work on big sizes of file for higher resolutions. Uh, you can just uh, embed the pictures directly with the full resolutions, but I like for the demonstration now and for using them on the uh, web pages and so on. You don't like, uh, you not to need to use high uh, resolution images. So I will come to uh, File, uh, Place Embedded. Okay, this is one of the images I got it from uh, Unsplash. It's a reality free. You'll find the link uh, in the description below. So you can find, uh, you can see it is almost 4000 by 6000 pixels. Uh, if I embed in my uh, 1000 by 1000 uh, frame or uh, working uh, area, uh, it will be uh, decreased. So, please. Okay, I need to select this file. Then, please. Okay. Uh, now, to, to keep the uh, ratio of the images, I will go to Image, Trim, and I will change the transparent pixels. Okay, now you can see now the image size is the new size, uh, not the, the original one. Okay, now uh, I need to apply the, the same effect again. Uh, I go to actions. This time I'll make it to uh, 12 pieces. I think 12 pieces is a little bit yes. This one I'll make it to uh, 12 pieces. Okay, and run. Okay, as we said here, uh, you can uh, you adjust uh, your prevalent drop shadow, which makes the the, co the contour of the puzzle lines. Okay, I will change here the color. Uh, I will select the blue one. Okay, I will increase its opacity, increase the distance a little bit, and uh, go to the bevel and uh, increase. Uh, maybe decreasing the depth this time. I make it. I need to return back to one. Okay, and I increase the size a little bit. Okay. Now you can see that automatically it's applied to all uh, the photos, and I am having this uh, blue shadow. Okay. Now uh, I need to show you one effect. I will go to uh, layer A1, and then I will uh, go back, go down completely to C4, which is the last one. Shift. Select all the layers are selected, and then I can uh, rotate them. I can rotate this image. Okay, you can see it's rotating around the frame. I will increase the frame after that a little bit, and uh, after that I can make. I can go to uh, edit, transform, and I like to skew. Okay. 
we open a little bit the space here because I need it to appear as if I'm ha having it uh, laid on a on a piece of paper so of course you can adjust after that uh, your dimensions okay for example like this one and then I'll go to select and then I will go to image uh, I'll go to canvas size and I'll increase it to uh, by 500 from all the dimensions from all the sides okay and I'm having fully my image uh, inside okay and then I'm going to add uh, a new layer okay and then this layer I'm going to fill it with a white background uh, after that I'm going to give it a filter clouds then I'm going to distort my clouds a little bit to give it a nice shape like this one okay after that I'll bring this uh, layer behind all the other layers totally to the bottom and above the background okay you'll find all your layers are come now I can come for example uh, using the select to one piece which is having this image for example I'll bring it here and I will come to this piece and I will bring it here. Okay. After that, I can start with the, uh, this image. This uh, slide is P2. I'll, and after that, I will start to create my video timeline. I will go to very, this image P2. I will make it smart also. Now, uh, this time I will not be recording uh, opacity, I will be recording motion, so I will record it using the transform. So that's the initial point. Okay, at, at in the middle of, the, uh, of this uh, small GIF, I need it to come to return back to its position, like this one. Okay, and here I like this one at the end of the video to be in its position so I'll be stopping here and I'll select this image which is P4 I'll go down to P4 make it smart layer also and I'll start recording a transform that's it. it's this position position in, in this time okay and I move to here for example and I bring it to each to its position okay now if I run the video you can see it's coming behind the the images it depends on its layer in uh, on the layers uh, panel so if you like that they are coming uh, in inside on top of the other layers you need to bring them uh, to the top so this P4 if I bring it okay. now I need to bring P4 on the top of the other layers and P2 also this one Okay, I bring them on the top of the other layers, but this time I need to uh, to delete the motions. So I need to come to P2. You will find them on the top. Okay, so I'll come to P2. I'll stand at this one at this point, and I'll delete this transformation, and I'll come again. To this point and we can add a two stop more two step motion for example I'll come here and move it here that's one point recorded and then I will move it here to its position 
okay and then I'll go to P4 so let me uh, run the puzzle now from the beginning run the GIF now from the beginning you can see now that this piece of puzzle is coming above all the other pieces of the puzzle and it's coming in two direction motion first to make it in a loop motion or something like that you need to select more uh, points on the on the motion line you can see that this image is still it's coming on top of the other layers and it's coming in its position also okay now to save it as a gif file export save for web okay you wait till it is loaded of course this gif is one of the big ones so you can divide it into less pieces but it depends on, on how you are going to use it or you can decrease it, you can decrease the size you can make the output in 50% of the, of the original size you can scale it uh, using the percent here okay because this image is a big one so I'm going to reduce this here to 50% and then I will save okay I will save it as a wedding Okay, now to go and uh, I will go to Means Explorer and we will go to this one which is our GIF. Now we can see the output, it's coming as a professional GIF. Uh, you can uh, use it in uh, your project. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, share the information and leave us uh, comments uh, how do you think about this series of videos. Thank you very much for following so far.